Well, it was supposed to change the way Americans looked at cars, a new vehicle that could run on no gasoline. No, we're not talking about the Chevy Volt. It's the EV1, the first mass-produced electric car by a major automaker. GM canceled that lease program back in 2006, angering a lot of EV1 customers. What did GM learn from the experience, and how did it help with the development of the Volt? Clean Sky's Lee Patrick Sullivan takes a look. When you enter the lobby of the new General Motors Battery Lab in Warren, Michigan, you are greeted by a ghost of production past. It's the only vehicle to be marketed as a General Motors car and not one of its divisions like Chevy or Buick. It's the EV1, the first mass-produced electric car that hit the roads and the imagination of Californians in the mid-1990s. The electric car is here. The car was only available by lease and had top celebrities counted among its customers. The EV1, it was almost hysterical kind of cool factor associated with that. Um, there's something about electric vehicles, you know. And when General Motors ended the lease program in 2002, it spawned an independent film. EV1 owners even held a mock funeral for the beloved electric car. The electric vehicle is not for everybody. It can only meet the needs of 90% of the population. GM officials say no one killed the electric car. It was just in hibernation. Inside the battery lab, the very first EV1 battery stands guard, like some kind of religious idol of the electric car world. A lot of the people uh, from the EV1 days, from the supply base to, the, um, um, to General Motors in general, uh, worked on EV1 and the technology as well as the people are working on the Chevy Volt today. From what I've read. And those people are benefiting from some of the technology developed for the EV1, which include regenerative braking, the electric drive system, the way a vehicle takes a charge, and most importantly, a network of electric car parts suppliers that was set up for the EV1. And the most talked about feature of the Chevy Volt, the small internal combustion engine that gives the car an extended range, was developed by EV1 engineers who were impatient waiting for the batteries to charge while they were testing the car. Yeah, actually, the EV1 experience um, enabled uh, the Volt to come to market. Um, when we were developing the EV1, um, one of the things the engineers need to do is they need to develop the vehicle while, under, while electrically powered. Well, there's a large charge cycle to be able to do that. So what the engineers did at the time is they took small motorcycle engines and generators, put them on trailers, and hooked them up to the EV1 so that they could create their own power plant so that they could drive indefinitely electrically um, for more development time. For all the technology the EV1 gave to the Volt, for some it was a black eye for General Motors, who EV1 advocates say gave up and set the development of the electric car back at least a decade. Yes, people wanted their EV1s. They wanted to ensure that they were a part of emissions-free driving, um, gas-free driving, and um, they wanted to be a part of the new technology, and that's very encouraging. I'm looking for those same kind of enthusiastic buyers for the Chevy Volt. I'm looking and hope that we can bring people into the showroom today for our, our hybrid vehicles like our Tahoe, our Yukon, our Malibu. All those hybrid vehicles are for sale today and our Chevy Volt will be there in 2010 and we want those same enthusiastic uh, uh, customers to, 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 to buy these vehicles as well. In the end, GM officials say it was cost that killed the EV1 program. In less than four years, the company spent more than $1 billion making 800 cars and they say at that rate they would have to charge $200,000 a vehicle just to turn a profit. In Washington, Lee Patrick Sullivan, Clean Skies News.